Yalimadut. Hopefully this session will give you some insight into neuroscience and how you can prevent some of these conflicts before they get bigger and also prevent disputes at home. We are in a lockdown situation and many of us are going to be experiencing different dynamics that we have never experienced before. So I'm going to be looking at how do you increase your self-awareness give you a background on how your brain and the chemicals in your brain work, give you some tips on how to manage your triggers and tips to avoid conflicts and manage disagreements and the use of language and behaviors that are healthy. But first, how are you feeling? How do you feel today in this situation? Many of us are not used to being with everyone at home at the same time. And how are you feeling in the situation generally? Just take a moment and look at some of these feelings and tell me how you're feeling. We're also going to be relating to how do you feel when you are communicated to? How do you feel when you're criticized or judged? How do you feel when you're excluded in a conversation or not given the right information? How do you feel when you're talked at or when you're undermined? Just think how you feel when this happens in a conversation. And why am I paying so much importance to feelings? Because feelings are emotions. And emotions is this engine or this energy that travels right the way through your body. And emotions have words. This is why emotional literacy is so important. Emotions are data and energy that enter in every cell of your body. They're signals that serve a purpose. So they tell you, they knock on the door and tell you that something's going on. They're assets. They can be signals and assets for you if you learn how to use them well. But they do affect us if we don't manage them properly or navigate through them properly. And they're also contagious, which means that when you are upset or moody, 90% of the time, everybody's picking it up because it just transfers. This is not a lesson on emotional intelligence, but I just wanted to point out how emotions are so important. And we need to understand that when we see our brain. If you look at this diagram, we have six brains. A human brain has the neocortex and the prefrontal cortex, which is the bigger part of the human brain. But then we also have an animal brain, a reptilian brain, a heart brain, and a gut brain. And they all work together. So when, you're, when you feel something in your gut instinctly, that's part of your brain all working together. Even your heart brain, you talk about heartache or feeling pain in your heart or I, I'm, I'm heartbroken. That's because everything starts working together. So the important one that I'm going to deal with now is where do the emotions get triggered from? They get triggered from the amygdala part of the brain, which lies between the animal and the reptilian brain. Which means that when we are emotionally in fear or afraid, the body doesn't know the difference between what is happening in the mind and what is reality. So what happens is we react in a fight, flight, freeze response. So some of us could become very defensive in our conversations. Uh, some of us could become argumentative. And we really want to show that we are right because we're in a fight. And why that happens is because we release a chemical called cortisol. And what cortisol does, it shuts the neurotransmitters of your brain so you can't think straight. So you will think more animal and reactive than more human. Now, what do we do so that we can become more human in these situations? Well, the first thing is we need to breathe. We need to breathe to open the neurotransmitters of the brain. But we also need to keep the other chemicals of our brain healthy. 
Because if we pump up cortisol continuously in our brain, then we're not going to be able to open those neurotransmitters. So we need some happy chemicals that open those transmitters and keep our brains healthy. So what are the things that trigger the amygdala, that animal in us? Sometimes the way we are spoken to or past experiences of memory that is triggered at that point or your emotions are so flooded that you can't think straight and it triggers all the time. Or the way words are spoken to you, so not just the way you're spoken to, but certain words trigger certain reactions in you. And that's what I'm going to go more into today. But there are also behaviors. So when we talk and blame people, or we attack them, or we criticize them, or we judge them, or we accuse them, or we resent them, we tend to do that, especially if we're protecting our children or our family members, or we just don't want to be blamed ourselves. And that's the, that just increases more cortisol and it shuts our brain for thinking. So in conversations, we start bouncing back. Then you produce happy chemicals. They're bonding chemicals. Bounce back ideas. Listen and listen with empathy and compassion. Share ideas, be flexible, include people in conversations. And another thing which I haven't mentioned um, at the onset is really important is developing your own self-compassion too. So that you can grow and those healthy chemicals can work in your brain. These chemicals, not just in conversation, but be, can, be, can, can help to give you a healthy, balanced mind. So how do you do that? Decrease the cortisol levels in your body by reacting out of fear or anger or frustration and try to manage those emotions, navigate through those emotions by speaking to it so that they don't become as um, escalated, but they start diffusing when you just acknowledge it to yourself even. And increase the happy chemicals. How do we do that on a regular basis? Meditate. Scientifically, scienti science has scientifically proven that meditation, volunteering, showing love and compassion, even stroking a pet, or a dog that you have, gratitude, showing appreciation, exercising, breathing, doing yoga, tai chi, praying, laughing, having hope and visualization, all increase these happy chemicals of oxytocin, serotonin, dopamine, and endorphins. So we need happy chemicals because they keep the brain healthy and flush things through so that you can be able to think straight and use your human brain. In conversations, when we listen with empathy, we are not only navigating through our own brain chemicals, but also in others. So just imagine you're in a conversation and something triggers you at that time. When it triggers you, pause, take a few deep breaths, take a two few deep breaths. If that doesn't work, acknowledge what you're feeling and see if it de-escalates. Change your movement if you have to, or if it's too much, leave the discussion for another day because you're too flooded to enter that discussion. When you're feeling ready and calm in your mind and you take that pause listen to the thoughts and emotions of what the other person is saying acknowledge their feelings and empathize with them so that they feel they've been heard and understood ask the right questions without judgment because sometimes questioning from more point of view may trigger them up again so ask questions without judgment 
focus on language that encourages solution together. What do you think we should do? What do you think we should um, do to manage the situation? What do you think of the problem? So engage and bond in the conversation more because everyone has a point of view and learning to listen to everyone's point of view is important. That's when you will get clarity. So stay away from pointing figures because that shows judgment, although some people do it out of habit. Raising your voice because that could instill fear. Using words of you because that attacks. Or dictating by saying, you should have done this, you must do this, you have to do this. Or limiting words by saying, no, you can't, won't. It just triggers that reaction to get into that defensive behavior. Very important, observe your thoughts, your emotions, your body language and your words. Because 70% of communication is nonverbal. It comes from your thoughts and your emotions and people pick them up. They don't just pick up the words you say or your body language, but they pick up what you're not saying because we are very perceptive. So if you are in a disagreement, you first listen and acknowledge the emotions and thoughts of the other person. Really listen from the heart and acknowledge what they're feeling. Remember, you want to diffuse that emotional charge. Focus on what you agree on first so the other person can be more open. Don't be condescending. Focus on what you agree on with them. Watch their body language change. You will feel a sigh or you will feel a movement and you'll be able to pick up a sense of relief. Then ask a question on your own thoughts about the situation by asking questions like, what if we looked at this? What if we looked at that? You may have changed some of your opinion after listening. Then build your agreements together. What do we need to do to move this forward? How shall we create our boundaries? What do we need to get through this? And to recap, how do we downregulate those chemicals? How do we minimize the types of conversations that trigger fear, power plays and ego games, uncertainty, a need to be right and group thinking? We've got to downregulate it because remember the cortisol increases. So how do we downregulate excluding people, judging them, limiting them, withholding them, act as if you know everything, dictating or criticizing. It's not easy. We all get into this trap because we are so protective even of our family that even in conversations, we tend to do it a little bit more. We've got to find a way to stop it. And instead, in our conversations, upregulate those chemicals. Chem in reinforcing conversations that inspire transparency, relationship building, understanding, and a shared vision of success, truth, and empathy. So you do that by including them, appreciating them, expanding the information, sharing, discovering, developing, and celebrating. Use these techniques for whatever age the person is. It works for a three-year-old, it works for a two-year-old, it works for a teenager, it works for us as adults. For every generation it works because all of us have the same mind. We're all humans, but we get triggered differently based on our past experience and our reaction. So watch the cues and be sensitive and mindful on the way you have your conversations and hope you're very successful at managing disagreements and managing conversations positively.
build those happy chemicals at home. Thank you. Stay safe and stay well.